but there are two really important points I want you to take away from this story. One is uh, who's really behind it. Prop 49, and, and you may have seen some political pundits suggesting that this was the legislature's idea, and they had their <laughs> own political purposes for doing that. Think about that when you hear this story, because it's not true. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, Prop 49 wasn't supposed to happen. And, and in fact, it would not have happened if there was any one group of people trying to make it happen. It happened due to the spontaneous activities of lots of people just like you, uh, as have many of these ballot measures. So I first got involved in this movement, um, the Prop 49 movement, in the fall of 2011. I was working with Common Cause as a national staff person, and they asked me for a serious proposal of like, all right, if we're going to really take on Citizens United and pass constitutional amendment, how do we do this? And I dug through my files and some research I'd done when I lived in Washington, D.C. in the 1990s and had learned about this history of voter instruction ballot papers. And it, the idea was the early colonists and, and our founding fathers and framers of our Constitution had a very common practice of electing someone to represent them and sending them with specific marching orders of how they wanted to do that. And I said, let's do that and demand that Congress pass a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. Common Cause said, great, how are we going to do these ballot measures? Why don't you, Derek, go see if you can raise some money so we can do one of these in Montana? I said, okay, it's a deal. Floated the idea on an article in the Washington Monthly in December of 2011, if you want to Google it. That's where Prop 49 started, in my experience. Um, turns out, so, this wasn't supposed to happen. I failed. I didn't raise the money. And I went to my boss, Bob Edgar, at Common Cause, and said, sorry, I tried. I didn't raise the money. He said, we're doing it anyhow. And that was the first thing that wasn't supposed to happen, but did. It's Common Cause dug deep and found the money to qualify the first statewide voter instruction measure in the state of Montana, I-166. Immediately, the corporate interest did just what they did here. They went to court. They don't want to have this debate. And they sued, trying to kick it off the ballot, just like they're doing here in California. Only in Montana, the judges were wiser. And they said, no, we're not going to kick this off the ballot. We're going to let the people speak. If you want to challenge it, challenge it after. Okay? That's not what happened here in California, so we'll get to what we do about that. But then the idea caught on in Colorado, and people said, let's do that here, too. And again, we came up short. I was on a conference call that I remember from a hospital, uh, and we concluded that we don't have the wherewithal to put this on the ballot in California. we got to pull the plug. Two weeks later, a different grassroots organization stepped up and covert said, we're going to make this happen here. And they did in an physically impossible timeline. They gathered about 180,000 signatures in Colorado. Nothing like that had ever been done in the state before. And again, there were technical challenges to some of the signatures, and there were about two weeks there when it was looking like it was not going to be on the ballot. And yet, we prevailed, and it was. Both of those passed by margins of three to one. And then Sarah Swanbeck's predecessor, Bill Vaughn, the Common Cause, said, well, why don't we do this in California? We started talking to legislators in that building, saying, why don't we put this on the ballot? One of them said, that's a great idea. Filed a bill to do that took it to the Assembly Elections Committee, it got crushed like a buck. The legislators said, no, we don't want to do that. So remember that. Every time you see a political pundit saying this was some scheme by the legislature, their initial reaction was no way. And then, funny thing happened. A grassroots organization based in Los Angeles called Money Out Voters In said, we're not taking no for an answer. They went out and found another legislator champion this idea, Senator Ted Lieu, and a movement was starting to happen in Cal California. I was running for Secretary of State, running around talking about it. There were organizers all over the place running around talking about it. We got a different response in the legislature after 76,000 faxes, 50,000 emails, hundreds of personal visits. But even then, at the Democratic Convention just March of this year, I personally went up to one of the lead legislators championing this, and I thanked them. I said, it's really great you're doing that. And they said, yeah, I know. 
you know it's not going to pass right there. And then this guy named Kai Newkirk and a bunch of other people got it into their heads that they would march from Los Angeles to Sacramento. And one of their demands would be, we wanted to vote on Prop 49. And they sat in there in that rotunda for two weeks. Many of them got arrested. I got arrested with them on the first day of that march. And we got a different response from the legislature than we were supposed to get. And that's my point. No one person made this happen. A legislator could not have made this happen if they wanted to. This happened because people like you up and down this state said we're gonna make this happen. And we did. And it is that spirit that convinces me we are going to overcome this roadblock too. So where are we at? We've got a Supreme Court justice named Goodwin Liu writing an opinion saying it would do irreparable harm to the voters of California to let us vote on Prop 29, to let us speak against the Citizens United ruler. And his logic is that it would steal attention from the other ballot measures and things on the ballot. Now, there's zero evidence in Montana, in Colorado, in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in Richmond, when these things were on the ballot, that it stole attention from anything else. There's zero evidence that a single voter was confused in any of these jurisdictions about exactly what they were voting on. People knew. We get this, right? There's zero evidence that any other candidate or ballot measure proponent is the least bit worried about this stealing attention from them this November. We've got one of the shortest and most boring ballots in the history of California, at least modern history, right? So what are we stealing attention from? Statewide races are basically foregone conclusions. The other ballot measures are dull and boring. But there is one item on that ballot that maybe people will pay more attention to if Prop 49 is up. And that is, did you know, I didn't even know this until recently. Supreme Court justices are up for retention votes in the state of California. And guess who is up on that ballot November 4th? Goodwin Lowe. So, I'm thinking, A, we as citizens have a duty to evaluate whether or not our Supreme Court justices understand our Constitution, and there seems to be a couple who don't. But B, we may still have a chance to send the message that we want to send. So think about that. I know how I'm voting on the question of two Supreme Court justices and whether we retain them or not. Check that out in your ballots. How did they vote? What? How did they vote on Prop 49? Uh, there are three justices' names on the ballots. One of them was not involved in the case because he's not yet seated on the court, but he may be by November 4th. Okay. There are two of them who are up and on this ballot. <laughs> Thank you. Who voted to kick Prop 49 <laughs> off the ballot. Stay tuned. Let's think about how we as a movement respond to this situation. Most importantly, thank you all for being here. We're not going away. We will not go quietly into that good night. We will. Yeah! yeah.